So, Laura is here actually today to dispel some myths about hospice care. Her speech entitled Susan's Story. Please welcome to the stage, Laura Nash, everybody. That must be a really depressing place to work. That's a phrase I'm quite often greeted with when I tell people about my job. Depressing. Now, if we went around the room, I'm sure there'd be a vast range of colourful words each of you would use to describe your job, whether they be complimentary or not. But I do hope none of you would say, depressing. And if you would, let's all agree it might be time for you to look elsewhere. In case you're wondering, I work for a hospice. I love my job, and from my experience, hospices really aren't depressing. But that's just one of the myths that I want to dispel tonight. And what better way to do that than to introduce you to one of the many positive, inspiring and happy people that we care for at the hospice? Introducing Susan. Now, Susan is in her mid-30s. She enjoys the occasional game of Scrabble. And as you can see from the photo, she's recently become quite fond of skunks. <laughs> <laughs> what you can't see from the photo, however, is that back in 2016, Susan was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I'll come back to Susan shortly. Another myth I often hear is that hospices are all about death. It's a fair assumption, yes, but we actually care for people from the moment they are diagnosed with a terminal illness up until the end of their life. So our main purpose is really concerned with living life to the full, which is all the more important when someone finds out they have less time left than they thought. This brings me back to Susan, who, although terminally ill, still has years of living ahead of her. In fact, since her diagnosis, Susan has got married to her new husband, John. They've shared a wonderful honeymoon together. And Susan is now looking to get back into work. Now, don't all of those things sound like living? What I also wanted to stress today is the range of ways that hospices can support people. You might think of a hospice as just an inpatient unit, very much like a hospital, but we actually, the majority of the care we provide is done so in people's homes by our community nurses or by our hospice at home team. We also have a day hospice facility which offers a 12 week therapeutic programme of care. It's quite difficult to describe the benefits of day hospice, but luckily, Susan's husband, John, I think does a really great job. Whether it's a skunk or Scrabble, it's just nice to see Susan come home with a smile. When Susan was coming to the day hospice, it was so good to see her feeling positive and happy. The hospice was obviously a big help to her, but it had a knock-on effect too. Seeing Susan upbeat again lifted my feelings, so it meant the hospice was also helping me. So after all of this, and there are so many other services that I haven't got time to talk to you about tonight, it's only a very small number of people who are actually cared for in our inpatient unit. And finally, I suppose the biggest myth that my job needs me to dispel is that hospices are part of the National Health Service and therefore solely funded by NHS and taxpayer money. Unfortunately, that's not the case. It costs Birmingham St Mary's Hospice alone £8 million a year to operate and less than half of this comes from NHS funds. The majority of our money, therefore, comes from voluntary income. 
people like you and me, volunteering, taking part in events, making regular or one-off donations, and essentially spreading the word so more people know these facts and choose to support us in the future. Ultimately, without people like you and me, hospices wouldn't be here for people like Susan and John. Thank you. Give it a round of applause, everybody.